What is up, everyone? Welcome to the finals of the January Portland Monthly Pre-Modern Paper Magic Afternoons Tournament. Now, we got a great game for you, so without further ado, let's dive into the two decks you're going to be seeing compete for the January Crown. First up, we have Marshall on five color reoccurring survival, which shouldn't be a surprise if you saw the last video. If you haven't seen any of the prior videos, make sure to like, subscribe so you don't miss future ones. But this is a value mid-range deck with a little bit of combo. Having survival of fittest and reoccurring nightmares to take advantage of a giant toolbox of ETB creatures and just value creatures, as well as a living wish package to go find even more answers in the sideboard. Super cool altars as well, just an amazing deck, and I'm so happy that it made the finals. But I think the real question is, who is he playing against? And making his return to the camera for the only second time ever is David on Oath Replenish. Now, if you missed this list when it was on, I think maybe round two, this is a mashup of two very popular lists, the Oath of Druids list and the Parallax Tide, uh, Parallax Wave Replenish list now this is super cool to see obviously it's been doing incredibly well for him i wish we could have seen even more matches on camera but overall this is going to be a crazy mid-range matchup and i can't wait to get into it so without further ado let's dive into the games and here we go marshall's on the left david is on the right i did want to call out another thing about david's list uh, that i think i mentioned in the previous video is how <laughs> foiled out and beautiful it is i think it's about as foil as you can get uh, without having any other special alterations, which David actually does do foil peels on custom cards. Uh, I'll give him a little shout out in the video description as well to his uh, Instagram link. But looks like Marshall is not going to be keeping his seven. Uh, trying to look at what David has in hand. I've seen a couple lands. Uh, I think it's an Aura of Silence. Um, maybe a Parallax Wave. I think also a library, a Sylvan library. So potentially keeping that hand just to draw into um, some real answers. And like on Marshall's side, we got at least one city, a recurring nightmare. Um, I think maybe I saw birds. All right, I'm gonna put one back. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. All right, put them back, and I think we are all good. As soon as we finish this text. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think this is going to come down to whoever gets their key card first. Uh, for David, I think that's going to be getting an oath down. And for Marshall, I think that's definitely going to be getting a survival down. Uh, the later game is where David, I think, has more of the advantage if he can get that oath down sooner. Um, but both players are just going to play a land and pass. All right, City Brass coming down. Tapping both, pinging one. And we got a werebear? No, a wall of roots. All right. Interestingly, David not fetching until the start of his turn. Maybe just trying to draw into a few more lands. Or slightly increasing the odds of drawing that land. It didn't seem like he was mana light, but maybe he was. We got a brush land out and fetched for a very nice looking planes. That masks. <laughs> that uh, John Avon uh, seventh edition planes is definitely my personal favorite. I think it was printed in another uh, set as well, but you know, I started in seventh edition, uh, <laughs> so that one's always gonna be my favorite set of land arts, I think. All right, we do have an oath coming down and that is huge for David. Let's see if there's a response from Marshall. Uh, 
Build an immunity, snap fire off, and naturalize. Does have a living wish, it looks like. Maybe looking to get some answers to that. But David is going to get a hit off of this, more likely than not. <laughs> and Marshall thinking about getting that Paragon Drake to steal whatever uh, David ends up getting. And looks like that is going to be the choice. So whatever you flip off that oath, uh, it will potentially be mine. I'm going to pass. All right, oath trigger on the stack. Thinking if he wants to do something here before that happens. Nope, we're just gonna start flipping. Marshall gonna be paying attention as this does give a little bit more insight onto what David is playing. Oh, and there's a Terrivore. Not bad, not bad. So, that Terrivore is going to be pretty big. There's a decent amount of lands. Oh, sweet, we're going to get some dice. It is currently a 7-7. Seven, seven. Draw for turn. Another brush land, and... Seal of Cleansing. He's gonna hit his own oath. Interesting. I wonder if he has a Replenish in hand, potentially? That is an interesting play, because notably, David could get another oath trigger after uh, Marshall plays out this Steal Your Best Creature. It is technically a creature. That is a very interesting play. I wonder what the reasoning is behind that. Maybe he didn't expect the, uh, oh, well, some hand disruption is definitely gonna, oh wait, no, that's the, uh, destroyed creature. Gotcha. All right, so, yes, that was a very interesting play. Not sure what he would have been playing around necessarily. He does have another oath in hand. Alright, another seal of cleansing coming down. And a Sylvan Library and... Asking about, I think, life totals here because of the City of Brass. I'm just gonna pass. So both players at 18 right now. Taking a little bit from their pain lands, a little bit from fetching. Not paying the echo cost there. And that potentially could have been why uh, David was playing around and destroyed his own. Both the druids is, there is so many echo uh, creatures in David's deck. Or maybe thinking that the Wall of Roots was going to die a lot sooner than it actually did. Either way, Survival of Fittest is coming out, and that is the big card I think Marshall wanted to see in this matchup. Now has a way to at least get one answer. Uh, the Seal of Cleansing is definitely looming. <laughs> and I think David missed his Library Trigger. Unfortunately. So, Oath coming down. Tap three. Take one. <laughs> Adjusting the correct life total, which is appreciated. And not having much else to do here, I wonder if you just hit Yeah, I almost would have hit the survival before playing everything out just to give 
marshal the fewest the fewest amount of information possible. But David could also be building into a parallax wave with that. Would be my guess, because I think it's potentially in his hand. Or Parallax Tider. I think it's Wave. I always get those two mixed up. Whatever the white one is, it exiles uh, creatures. <laughs> I've not played the deck very much myself. So. And I actually haven't played that much against it either. We don't have a ton of uh, that type of deck here in Portland. I think David might be the only one that actually has the cards for it. Of course, this is a proxy friendly tournament, so anyone could show up with some printouts and uh, give it a go. And Marshall is thinking through what he wants to get here. Uh, I can't remember if he has the Nantuko. Nope, we're just going to get some value. Very, uh. I guess he can fire it off, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Get another wall of roots potentially for some more mana. And at any point here is when I would be uh, hitting that survival, I think. The value you get out of that is just a little too high to keep around. All right, and we're going to Marshall's turn. Full grip in hand. As a reoccurring nightmare, I believe. I was thinking about playing it. Actually can't play without his creature dying, so that doesn't make a ton of sense. But he's gonna play out another wall roots. Notably a little land light here. Alright, go take one down. Go fetch. Do we fetch for yeah, I was gonna say either a, a werebear or birds would make sense too, just to get a little bit more mana fixing that doesn't hurt you so much. Do you go for the combo here and get that Palacron? Nope, we're just gonna get uh, a way to get more lands, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is the, the Yavamaya Granger, I think. Um, ETB, go get a land. I think it's basic forest. Or maybe it's just basic land, but I think it's basic forest. No, it is basic land. <laughs> Alright. Are we passing? Potentially. David may be thinking here if he wants to fire off the oath trigger. All right, we're gonna wasteland the city. Disrupt mana even more. Hopefully, find a terror uh, very soon. So one of the great things about mashing up these two decks is the Oath of Druids mill with uh, the Replenish ability. Getting a solid, well, <laughs> I don't know how many Replenishes he has, but I think that's at least three. All right, there we go, Terravor. Not a lot of cards left in David's deck, but he definitely has a lethal amount of lands, I would assume. If he gets to actually keep it, though, that is a whole other deal. Marshall still very obviously representing that Peregrine Drake. And I don't know if David has a way to deal with that right now. But if he can draw a Replenish, he may not need to. Does David only have two cards in his entire deck. Oh my god. <laughs> that is not great. 
Notably, he didn't use the uh, Civil Library Trader either. I think maybe just forgetting that it's there. sure what's going on here. <laughs> I think maybe just figuring out what exactly is in his library. Or maybe Marshall asking what's in his library. Or maybe did we miss a Terror I'm not fully sure what's going on. <laughs> Are we doing a uh, impromptu deck photo? <laughs> I think David maybe just kind of indexing exactly what is left in his deck. And seeing if a replenish even makes sense. There is the uh, the Croson Verge, I believe, that hasn't been milled, so he can still put a couple of cards back on top of his library, but it may still be in his deck, which again, having the uh, the Sylvan Library activation could have potentially helped. I'm taking him searching for that as a signal he doesn't have a blue source yet. I can do it. I can do it. I mean, there's... What? You know, it was just green. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go good. Very interesting. Okay. And I think David only with two cards in hand. Maybe one of them is the, uh, the Reclamation. I almost think you have to put a replenish, right? <laughs> replenish and Terrabore? I know what's in the library, and I don't like it. Oh no, just one card in hand? Did he not draw yet? Maybe he didn't draw. Okay. We can still do this. We can still do this. We actually did it. We did it. I don't know, this has been a crazy couple of turns, and uh, I don't think it's going to end well. If he, it all depends what he has in hand. Is is that a Terrabore? I can't tell. Oh, he does have the Reclamation in hand. All right, so he's going to put some cards on the top of his library. Is this happening before he draws? I think it might be. I think this is still in his upkeep. All right, putting two swords. Okay. All right, so we got two swords. Look at the top four. Or top three, sorry. <laughs> I know how library works. And there is definitely going to be one sword in there. He's going to take it. There must be... The two cards that are left... In his deck must have been a replenish and a terror i would guess all right well marshall is going to go looking for an answer
Not exactly sure what he's grabbing. There's a little high. Mm -mm. What is that? He's thinking about a lot of things. <laughs> Playing two is out. Uh, David only having four cards in his library it does mean the. Uh... Oh, okay. So he is motioning that he did end up blowing up the uh, the survival as well when this search went on the stack. All right, Ravenous Bailoff. Interesting. I guess maybe just to make sure um, that a Terror swinging in wouldn't necessarily be lethal. Hmm. Did he draw a land, though? That is a uh, big question. <laughs> Making a mana, losing a wall. Go ahead and grabbing, I think that's planes. Again, that uh, that altered legends art. Pretty sure that's a planes. This is very late at night in a. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> a facility that does not have great lighting. I did bring my own light here, which is the only reason you can even see what's going on. Um, I have been playing with adjusting it more, um, and I think it's... Uh... Oh, all right. Exiling to get some replenishes. All right, so I forgot he could do it twice. <laughs> Having it drawn and not in the graveyard definitely helps out a lot. And this is actually now looking very good for David being able to get his entire suite of enchantments <laughs> on the battlefield and well uh, Marshall having no way it looks like right now to take that Terravore either which I'm not sure how large it is but is definitely threatening lethal just by itself uh, Marshall only having 16 and can block maybe 3? All right, not forgetting the library trigger this time either. Looking for replenish. Uh, mathematically, probably had it. Yep, looks like we're gonna play replenish. Bring back everything, and I think that's gonna do it. That's gonna be game number one going to David. And here we are in game number two. That really did come down to the wire <laughs> for David. Uh, having that uh, flashback reclamation definitely sealed the deal there, I think. But also Marshall, unfortunately, being very mana screwed did not help things. It did come down to both players getting their key cards out with the Oath and the Survival as I expected, but not having enough mana to play the creatures you're uh, surviving for definitely is not the best. So, some sideboarding potentially happened, I would imagine. Uh, mostly, probably on David's side. Marshall having the wish board definitely limits his sideboard options, but maybe we'll see some stuff. And we're just going to start things off with a duress, which I do think was actually in the side. All right, so we got a couple of Enlightens, a Terravor, a Swords, and a bunch of lands. And we are going to play open, which is nice. Taking one of the tutors makes sense. Uh, all of those are functionally the best cards in David's deck, I would argue. We got Walrus coming down, and things looking good for Marshall right now. David thinking about how much he wants the swords. A wall. And he is just going to tutor instead. Probably just grabbing an oath. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Even with the Terravore in hand, he still has 
at least two more. I'm not actually sure. I don't remember from the deck list if he has the full four. Um, if he did, one of them was definitely in that last two cards from the last game. But yeah, that uh, that makes a lot of sense. Getting a free roll. Marshall's deck relying heavily on the creatures that he uh, searches for. Both coming down and pass. The wall gets to live for another turn. And Marshall thankfully finding land drops in this game. And mana acceleration, which is even better. Ooh, I see a naturalize, I think, in hand as well. And it's gonna go and hit that oath. Some cyborg cards, and I think maybe some maid bard. I think there is a naturalize in the main. Uh, definitely putting in some work here, and right now putting uh, Marshall in the lead. All right, seal cleansing coming down. Only one card hidden in hand for David, but just holding up that interaction for uh, a potential survival. Ooh, and we got a face down creature. <laughs> and a pass. I believe that face down creature would be a Nantuko. Thinking about if he wants to flip it right now, just to hit a seal. Nope, not worth it. Instead of bolt the bird, we're gonna swords the parrot. I don't. <laughs> All right, land coming down. Terravore, I think it's just a one-one right now, but it is still a creature. And it is still a play with uh, only one card in David's hand. May have been the most man efficient thing he could have done. No attacks coming in, which is interesting. No, uh... Oh, right, because fetch land. That makes sense. <laughs> no flips either for the face down creature. Ooh, and we got a parallax wave coming down now. This is why... I think uh, Marshall would have held that up if he can. Can you flip it? It's four, right, to flip? David trying to exile all three creatures and then blowing up the wave in response, functionally removing them from the game. They are not coming back. And is this the shade? Or the, uh, the insect that kills enchantments? It is. Okay. So with that exile on the stack, it still gets blown up and it still exiles everything. I think in that case, you would have wanted to hit the, uh, the seal before the parallax wave came down. And just hope that David doesn't draw another one in the next five turns. <laughs> but he did just top deck one, so it would not have mattered anyways. Um, that is unfortunate. And now we got a 2-2 two -two Terravore as the clock. Alright, tap three. Go get a land. And pass. Grab another forest. And 
and it looks like David passes. Well, all right, paying the echo cost, swinging in for two, and pass. Is that an oath? I think that is an oath in hand. Yes. Not sure what the second card is for David. But is just going to play it out. Interesting. Okay. I guess this does prevent David from playing, or for uh, Marshall from playing another creature next turn for fear of uh, buffing up that Terravor to lethal heights. But right now, Marshall is just content to attack, putting David down eight. Definitely in the lead at this moment. And just an attack and pass from David, and a bit of a stalemate here, for sure. Going down to six. Ooh, are we breaking serve? Taking one for Yavamai Elder, gonna sack the Yavamai Elder. Go get some more ramp. That is definitely a smart way to not only take the lands out of your deck, but also ramp into potentially something bigger. Um, I believe this list plays a Hermit, which actually would not be the best thing to play right now, but uh, could definitely get some damage through if it came to that. I'm actually not sure what he's ramping into necessarily, maybe just wanting to be man efficient and uh, open up some options for next time. Land for turn and pass. Oh, and uh, drawing off of the the elder's ability as well. Ooh, is that a swords? Marshall's hand that I saw. Now, David thinking here because he is definitely losing this race as it stands. He can't keep trading two for two, and without a way to get more lands into his graveyard quickly, uh, that terror is just gonna stay pretty small. Okay. If he does have a swords in hand, potentially swordsing his own Terravor before the oath trigger, could be a good play. Getting a little life and getting that mill into the next one. Nope, oh, we're gonna get a duress here. What is David working with? Uh, looks like a Parallax Tide and a Croson. Nasty stuff. I think you wanna take the, the flashback card. Reduce the amount of times he can use that, especially after how effective it was in uh, in game number one. And no, is actually going to go ahead and take the, the Tide, which is interesting considering the amount of lands available uh, to Marshall. I would not be as worried about that right now. All right, swing in for two, and we are gonna block. Okay, now nobody has any creatures. <laughs> <laughs> and what is coming down? Who's that? I'll blast you. All right, this is the enchantment removal. No more oath. Ooh, and I would have definitely taken the uh, the reclamation if he can just get another oath 
or if you can just put it back on top. Or in, uh, sorry, not on top. Shuffle then. That is very interesting. Alright, we still have a clock. Down to five. And it looks like he even had a pyro, like, Marshall has a pyroblast in hand, so he has interaction up for that. Ooh, we got a recurring nightmare. That is pretty sweet. Do you have any good targets right now, though? You have a lot of ways to ramp. But no threats. You also technically shouldn't be rearranging your graveyard. <laughs> there are cards that care about graveyard order uh, in the game, so in theory, pre-modern, you're not supposed to rearrange your graveyard. It's very pedantic, but it is technically in the rules. All right, so we're gonna activate that, and then activate it one more time. Mm. Shouldn't he have a, a creature? On the Maybe he's thinking about which one he wants to bring back. Oh, okay. So in response to the target. Interesting. Okay. Shuffle a couple cards back in. Smart play from David, interrupting the little value engine here. And unfortunately, not having much else going on, so it's just going to pass. And let's see what Marshall. I think Marshall has a bird, so we can get this going again. Sack it again, and David can just target it again, <laughs> uh, interrupting it further. So we're gonna hit, I think, another duress and the enchantment removal creature, which is the uh, the monk, I believe. David's told me the name of that card a bunch, and I still can't remember what it is. I am terrible with card names, guys. By the way, I can tell you what a card does. More or less accurately. <laughs> if you ask me to name it, God no. <laughs> I am the reason why they had that rules change with uh, the whole Warburg and Lost debacle, for sure. I can describe it, I will definitely name the wrong one. <laughs> Alright, we got four coming in, so that's, uh, that's a wave mana. Nope. Or, uh, tide mana. <laughs> Countered. Good reason to hold that up. And unfortunately, Marshall drawing a little dead here. And David drawing dead as well. We just got a lot of uh, a lot of lands and goes. Both looking for some action. David maybe finding it. Ooh, a replenish. That is huge. Huge. What do we got in there? We have, at the very least, a seal and two waves. Maybe even two seals, I think. Well, he does have a way functionally on the board to blow up one of them anyway, so... And an oath. <laughs> Ooh, and all... Oh my. <laughs> this looking very bad. Exactly ten All right, we're just going to exile all those lands. Blow them up. No more lands for you. And a pass. All right, no more activated abilities on creatures either. Cradle, which is... Probably the worst land you could see at this point, unfortunately. And David, even after all that action, not drawing a true threat. All right. Marshall does hit a land that he can use. 
Grabbing the planes. No, a swamp. That is a swamp. All right, gonna duress. Shows that David too is flooding out quite a bit. And is this gonna pass? And Marshall with the pass. Unfortunately, getting most of your lands hit makes it hard to do much with uh, one black mana. And both players just kind of passing back and forth. I think that's another land for David. Drawing all the lands. I don't know how functionally good it is in, uh, in the Oath uh, Replenish deck, but having some more uh, cycle lands might be pretty good. <laughs> Ooh, we got Tormod's Crypt. Little sideboard attack coming in. Not gonna do much right now. Ooh, and we have a survival coming down. That's pretty... Nope. Alright, cost one more. <laughs> uh, that's unfortunate. Okay. We have an answer to that survival coming down. Now, do you want to play it even though you can't activate it? Nope, just gonna pass. That little extra actually uh, helping Marshall. Because he would have just had that seal and destroy it straight up. This way, at least, maybe if he draws another land, he can get an activation. Or is it two more to play? I never remember exactly the, uh, the aura. Ooh, but he does have two survivals in hand. Interesting. I almost would play one out to, to bait it out, but you know, another replenish would be absolutely backbreaking. I think you just lose the game if another replenish happens. There's not too much you can do about that. Marshall giving his sideboard a little look. Must have drawn a wish. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I think that is what is happening. And what do you grab here? It looks like he did side up, board out most of the, the living wishes. Find the, the Peregrine. Steal the Terrabor. Might be the best option he has right now. And it's just gonna pass. Of course, no creatures on his side of the field means no oaths are happening. Ooh, that is an Enlightened Tutor. Are we just gonna be closing this out right now? Turning all my creatures in, or all my enchantments into creatures? No, getting a Parallax. Okay, we're just gonna... <laughs> yep, we're just scooping it up right here. Marshall not wanting to play through yet another one-sided Armageddon. And that is game number two going to David. And David takes down the tournament. Thanks again to the players. Congrats to David for taking it down in some crazy games. And thanks to all of you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. This is just February's tournament, so January has already been recorded, is in the books, waiting for me to edit. And by the time this video goes up, I think that weekend is going to be the March tournament. So tons of footage, tons of tournament coverage coming. So make sure you ring that bell and do all those things that uh, all the more successful YouTubers tell you because, well, there's a lot to come. Thanks again, and I'll catch you next time.